Spitfire Audio just came out with their newest addition to the Abbey Road Orchestra line, Metal Percussion. As a percussionist myself, I'm going to take you through the library, show you what I think about it, and let you know whether you need this or not. In fact, I'm going to give you my verdict right up front. The verdict is, you probably don't need this library. Especially if you have a broad percussion library already, you likely have a ton of these instruments. However, if you want some extra things and details in your samples, expertly recorded in a world-class studio by a world-class engineer, then get this library. Let me explain. So as I predicted very early on, Spitfire has come out with a metallic only version of their library. Mostly because I noticed that everything that was metal was missing from Abbey Road Orchestra high percussion. Things like triangles and tambourines and basic stuff like that. So knowing that, I mentioned in my last review of the other two percussion libraries of this line, which you should go check out both uh, Abbey Road Orchestra Low Percussion and High Percussion. I've done reviews for on my channel. I mentioned that for metal percussion, I wanted all the things, all the symbols, all the crashers, all the special things, a bunch of eff effects and such, things like that. And that's exactly what we got. Now again, this isn't a walkthrough of all these sounds, but I'm going to go over some highlights and I'll also give you a little bit more context on some of these. So. As usual, the metal percussion is housed within the Abbey Road Orchestra plugin, and you can filter out of all of the instruments here on the side. So let's check out the Piatti. Piatti is the Italian word for crash cymbals. Piatti, I think in Italian means like plates, like a dish plate. But I usually rename this uh, to crash cymbals whenever I use the Piatti. So everything is laid out across the whole keyboard here, and you can hover over everything to see what it is. First, we have what is being referred to as a Germanic dark 21 inch pair uh, that's being let ring. So there, here's what that sounds like. A few more techniques, damped, a scrape, and then there's another symbol, Viennese mellow 19 inch pair. More techniques and then one more pair the French bright 17 inch so there are three crash symbols total here so right off the bat we have three different pairs of symbols to play with with a bunch of velocities lengths round robins and mic positions and that is awesome why is that awesome with these suspended symbols there are another three different kinds of suspended symbols that's six different kinds of symbols across crash symbols and suspended symbols. Now, isn't that kind of overkill? Can't we just use one for each? No, let me tell you why. So I'm a classically trained percussionist, whatever that means. Not that that means anything, but I've had experience playing in orchestras and brass ensembles and wind ensembles and brass bands and tons of other kinds of ensembles. And I can tell you this, there is a world unto every single instrument in the percussion family. And that includes in the family of symbols. A good percussionist, and if it is available to the percussionist, a good percussionist will select the correct tool for the job. And this depends on the kind of music that is being played. So let me break this down for you. The first pair we have here are the Germanic dark 21 inch pair. Let's listen to that again. So the characteristics of German cymbals is that they're generally pretty large, but they're very thick. The, the symbol itself is very thick which means that it's heavy. When you crash a pair of German cymbals together, because of the extra weight, it makes them more articulate. Thus, the sound is punchier and has a, a stronger beginning to every single crash. The weight gives them a darker sound, and this makes them really great for big, impactful moments in music. Viennese cymbals are kind of a default cymbal. They're not as thick as German cymbals, but they're not super light either. They're a good all around general symbol. And if you record one symbol for a sample library, the Viennese style is probably the one that you would want to go with because it's a good amount of articulation and volume and weight and brilliance and all of that. That makes them ideal for m most orchestral music and things like marches and such. Now, French style symbols are the lightest of the bunch. They're the thinnest, which means that their articulation is very light. It's not as um, impactful as German symbols. That means that they excel at playing softly because of the soft articulation. Um, the light symbols give you that airiness without a lot of the, the punch, which is hard to do with German symbols because they're just so heavy that 
does carry even if you try to play softly. So French samples are ideal for that kind of thing, for light music, for very romantic music. I personally don't like when you try to crash French cymbals really loud. It just sounds like a, like a slap or something, only because the cymbals are so thin that the articulation doesn't lend itself to a loud crash. So the advantage is here that we get access to all three crash cymbals and that means you get to choose which crash symbols you want for a particular thing. So armed with this knowledge, let's check out the sounds of each one. Again, here's German. Viennese. French. So you can hear almost a difference in pitch between the German, the Viennese, and the, and the French symbols. So I'm, now I'm going to play the symbols softly. Here's the French symbols, soft. Here are the German symbols soft. So playing them softly, you can tell that the German symbols are just much bigger and they're heavy and they're, they're actually hard to control when you're trying to crash um, a lot. Let's listen to the Viennese symbols softly. Now I'm gonna hit the German symbols really loud. Very big sound. Now I'm gonna do the same with the French symbols. That one doesn't sound as impressive to me super loud. It just sounds like you're slapping the two symbols together and not much happens other than that. Let's listen to that again. German, really loud. Really big and, and full. French. It's all right. I mean, if you want that kind of sound, you can go for it. Completely valid. It's just, if you were to go with one for the other, the German symbols are gonna cut through much better because of that articulation. They're so heavy. And the Viennese symbols sound like a good middle ground. All right, let's move on to the suspended symbols. So I mentioned before, there are three different kinds of symbols. Now we have different articulations or beaters, Felt mallets, which is what you usually will use for a suspended cymbal roll. You can play with brushes, which is cool. Sticks, if you want that kind of sound. You can bow them, which is a really cool technique. Or you can scrape it. I'd really like to know what they scraped the um, cymbals with. You can use a coin to scrape a cymbal. You can use just your fingernail to scrape a cymbal. You can use a triangle beater to scrape a, a, a cymbal. You can use basically anything. So I. I'd really like to know what they use to scrape each one, but I don't know. Now, we have these all-in-ones, basically every single articulation for one symbol itself. So let's check this out. This is for the dark symbol. This is a 20 inch symbol. The size of the symbol does affect its pitch. If it's smaller, it's, it will probably be brighter. If it's larger, it'll probably be darker or like a lower pitch. But even if two symbols are the same size, they can be made very differently and that will also affect whether they're very bright, full of overtones and shimmery things, or very dark. So let's check this out. This is a single hit of the 20 inch with the felt mallet. Yeah, I, I think hitting a, mallet, hitting a symbol with a felt mallet is fine. I usually don't go for it. Now we have two different kinds of rolls. We have a roll and then swell. And then the same thing for if it's gonna be choked at the end. The difference is, if you just hold down the roll key, it stays at one volume, and you can change that with the modulation. And let's turn on the soft takeover for this. By the way, you can't really decrescendo a suspended cymbal roll, so be careful, don't fool yourself into thinking that, that's, that that'll sound any good if you try to get someone to play it. Because you're moving so much energy into a cymbal, I mean, you can relax the energy and the sound will die out, but it's not gonna be like shh, like it won't give you that effect. It's really great for going up, shh, like this. But going down, it's it just, it, that won't work. Brushes. A brush roll. 
Now the swells are basically, you can set the modulation wheel at a certain point, and when you press this key, it'll crescendo up to the velocity that you chose. If you press it really hard, it will make the roll shorter. Or if you press the note softly, it'll make the roll longer. But it'll stop at when it reaches the dynamic you chose. So here's all the way up. The same thing with the next key over, but it'll choke at the end. Which is cool. Uh, really great that those are recorded. And then sticks. I, if you hit it softly, you can hear the bead of the stick hitting the cymbal. And if you hit it hard, now you'll be using most likely the shoulder of the stick to crash against the sided cymbal. Yeah, now we have the effects up here, scrapes. And then bows. Each of these are split out because each one sounds pretty unique, so it will not apply round robins when you go for each of these. You can just select which scrape you like and it'll play back that same scrape every single time. And I think that's a good thing. Let's briefly check out what the mellow symbol sounds like. This is just, a, this is actually an inch bigger, but because it's made differently, it sounds not as dark as the dark symbol. Now, I don't know if you can hear that. Let me bring up an EQ. I can hear this. Now here's um, an instance of the Pro-Q3 because I like its spectrum analyzer. Let me play that again. Now that bass note can be one of several things. It can be maybe a drum that's resonating off to the side, but it's more likely just the sound of the stand that the cymbal is on resonating because you're hitting the cymbal that is attached to it really hard, resonating against the wood floor. Now, I know this because I've observed that this happens when I play the cymbals really loud, whatever it happens to be on, especially if the floor is wood or something that can can vibrate then you'll hear that so up to you whether you want to cut that sound out when you have this it's not an extraneous noise as something that can be avoided it's something that would happen in real life so it's at no fault of the quality of the recording you can cut that down cut that out completely maybe and help clear up a mix or can add some more realism if you if you want finally we have the bright symbol which is a 16 inch Something that would cut through maybe a little bit more are the splash symbols. So the splash symbols are only maybe a couple inches big. It could be six inches, could be eight inches, but they're just small, small symbols. And here we have a 10 inch and an eight inch. So here's 10 inch. Here it is choked. Yeah, really quick splashy sounds. Now this is really cool. They've included a spiral symbol. This was something I was hoping that they would add here. A spiral symbol, basically you can imagine if someone took a pair of scissors to a suspended symbol and just started from the edge cutting in around and around and around and what is being cut would just drape off of the symbol and you leave it like that and you hit that symbol, That's this is what it would sound like. So here's the, the spiral symbol. What a complex sound. So basically what you're hearing is you're hitting the side, one of the draping bits of the symbol, and that is moving the energy up and down of the spiral and it all moves uh, together and it gives you a really cool, unique sound. Here it is again. They also have a rake here. Now that's just moving the stick and moving it across all of the, um, the draping. You're moving it across like that.
That's that's cool. I'm glad we have that. I like that sound a lot. Let's check out the Tam Tams. So we have two different kinds of Tam Tams with a variety of different techniques. We have it with regular mallets. Here's the first one. And here's the other Tam Tam. Now one is being said that that's a 36 inch and the other is a 30 inch. We also have a super ball. A super ball is like, think of like maybe a bouncy ball on a stick and because it's a rubbery surface, you can drag that along something and it'll, because of the friction, vibrate on it. And on a bunch of instruments, it's a really cool effect, including on the Tam Tam. So let's check this out. And we have a continuous drag. So you can make it last as long as you want and end it when you want to. Again, scrapes. You can scrape a tam tam with a coin, a triangle beater, all of those things are great. So here we go. It's a cool effect. Here's another one on the other tam tam. Now we have all-in-ones for each Tam Tam. Now, according to this description, Tam Tam A, it says is a 30 inch Swiss. Now I was trying to figure out what that meant. And the only thing I could come up with is that there's a company that makes symbols very well known across the world. And they're known as Pasty. That's how I've always pronounced it. I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced, but Pasty symbols, I think are from Switzerland. So I am assuming that this is a 30 inch Pasty Tam Tam that's being played here. Tam Tam B says it's a 36 inch Wuhan. Now a Wuhan is actually a brand name of a, of a symbol maker. This is their Tam Tam. So to me, the Swiss sounds brighter. The Wuhan sounds like it has more darker overtones. So it, it, it's sound is very spread, but doesn't get high pitched uh, much. This would be great for big impacts if you want it. Really nice and impactful, but could also be really cool if you play it softly. There are some other effect type things that they've included in here. The thunder sheet, I love a thunder sheet. really menacing. It's just a large sheet of metal. We've also got a water phone. This can be really cool if you use, say, the ambient mics. So love this. That sounds really cool because it's like, it's not direct, but you're hearing it bouncing off of other surfaces. So that's a way that you can use it. They also have these crashers and stack. This is something I was hoping they would include as well. So we have a 12 inch crasher and a 14 inch crasher. So here's one crasher. So crashers are basically like these, if these are the crashers that I'm, uh, I'm thinking they're using, the ribbon crashers. Ribbon crashers are basically like these bits of metal that are on a device and you just hit it and they bounce against each other. We also have a cymbal stack. This is when you grab a cymbal, put it on top of another cymbal, and maybe another cymbal on top of that. Usually just two cymbals though. Here's what that sounds like. It's a very muted sound because the two cymbals don't really get to resonate because they're held against each other. But the, uh, the sound is a really cool trashy sound. Finally, let's check out the small metals. So this is where we have most of the little things, things that I thought were missing from the high percussion library. Again, we have three different kinds of symbols here. Let's listen to each one. This is the low triangle. Yeah, really full of harmonics and overtones there. Middle symbol. Also very uh, complex sound and the high symbol. That one to me sounds like the simplest. If I were to guess, the high symbol is probably like just a straight up 
metal triangle that doesn't have much texture to it. It's just a straight triangle. That gives you a, a simpler, more direct pinging kind of sound. And it's, it's a nice sound. Let's pull up a close mic for this. Close one. Yeah, nice. Low symbol is probably larger, like a larger symbol, and it probably has a bunch of divots and things inside of it. I'll try to pull up a picture of what I'm imagining in my head so I can show you. But this is what I imagine the low symbol probably is. Yeah, I can hear a low frequency, I can hear a middle frequency, I can hear a really, really high pitch frequency in there. There are all these kinds of colors that are coming out of the triangle. And it's awesome that you can get to select which triangle you want to use. You'll probably use the high triangle most often because that's the most traditional sound when you think of, uh, of a triangle. But the middle symbol I can really see myself using as an accent for something colorful. That's, oh, listen to how shimmery that is. Now let me turn on voice choking here. And now we can really play along with the symbol. So here we have regular hit. And here we have a choked hit. With the voice choking on, whenever I hit a new note, it'll cut off the last note. So I can play around with open and closed triangle playing. That is just fantastic. Let's check out the tambourines next. We have, again, three different kinds of tambourines. The pop, alternative, and the orchestral. So a uh, pop tambourine is uh, the kind that maybe you see a person play in a rock band or some other kind of band. It doesn't have a head on it. It's just has a handle and you have all the jingles on the edge. You can hit it with the hand to accent it. And here we have a hand roll and a shake roll. So what I'm thinking is happening here, a shake roll is when you just move the tambourine back and forth and the jingles just don't stop. I can also hear Joby is hitting the tambourine for the start of an articulation, which is common to do, to give it a, a good start but it's just ending. So if you want, with voice choking, you can have a, a hit, like a hand hit right here to end the roll. The alternative tambourine, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be actually. This one definitely has a head on it. I can hear it resonating. And then your orchestral tambourine, I think it's just your run of the mill tambourine with a head on it. So I'm not entirely sure what they mean by short shake. Is that just hitting the tambourine at the edge, which is how you typically would play an orchestral tambourine? Or is it being shaken like that, really dry and articulately? I can't tell. The accent is just hitting it really hard. Hand hit. A shake roll. I kind of wish they had... Yeah, I wish they had a thumb roll in here. I wish they had recorded a different lengths of thumb rolls. A short thumb roll, a medium, and a long thumb roll that crosses the whole thing. A thumb roll basically is when you move your thumb across the surface of the tambourine towards the edge. And because of the friction between that, if you do it at just the right amount of pressure, it causes it to jump up and down like a super ball does on a, on a surface and makes the jingles move together. That's what makes the sound a roll. Thumb rolls are great for short bursts of rolls. Shake rolls are harder to, to get the sound really good. We have a bunch of other kinds of instruments in here. Finger cymbals. They're technically not cymbals. They're usually made of um, some kind of ceramic material, but they're such full of color. They're, they almost sound like crotales, but there's no definite pitch to them. It's just one nice 
sound. I complained in high percussion that there was no kabasa. I forgot that the kabasa has metal beads on it for the shaky part, so they've included it in metal percussion. Let's check that out. Although there still is no shekere in the high percussion library, and that's what I was missing. We have some interesting instruments in here, like these chain drops, which I don't see myself using, maybe for some cool effect. I'm glad we have a mark tree. Uh, I haven't had a mark tree sample yet in any of my sounds, so I had to like find audio of a, of a mark tree if I wanted to use it. This is really useful in a lot of different kinds of of music just to add that that shimmer and sparkle. We also have a spring, which I love. I love a spring in, in a percussion section. I love the spring because it's so full of color and overtones and harmonics. So here's what this spring sounds like. You can hear almost the pitch almost like modulate back and forth because of the construction of the of the part. It's technically not an instrument. You can just use a a spring from like a car. And you can rake it. Ooh, that's a cool slow rake there. Probably being hit with a triangle beater. Also sleigh bells and Indian bells. So now let me show you how I've included everything in my template. So here's my ultimate template. You can get this at ernestocomposer.com slash templates, by the way. And this is an update that I've made to my template. I have made a new category called Orc Perk Metal. So I used to have my symbols and stuff in my orchestral percussion high folder or a submix. I wanted to treat it a little differently, so I now have a new category. So all of my categories are timpani, orchestral percussion low, which is everything from low percussion lives in here, orchestral percussion mid high, which is pretty much everything from the high percussion library exists in this folder. And now metal. This metal folder is pretty much exclusively Abbey Road Orchestra. I have it sort of organized here in, in a way that I found um, natural. So I have crash symbols at the top and then each suspended symbol type after that. We have a China symbol. China symbol is like sort of an inverted symbol that has a skirt at the edge, another really cool sound. And then splash symbols. Then we go into the tam tams. We have the 30 inch and the 36 inch. So we'll have the thunder sheet and the wind gong. A wind gong is basically like a small, thin tam tam, which has a cool, quick sound to it. Then we have the more metallic, tingy sounds. So in order, it goes from triangles, tambourines, the mark tree, the bell tree, the wind chimes, the temple bowls, then the cowbells, then the agogos, because they're similar to, to how a cowbell is, is played. We have these other ones. The finger symbols, the sleigh and Indian bells, and then the water phone. Then we have the sort of trash percussion instruments. So we have anvils, the brake drums, the oil drum, which we didn't go over, but it's a cool, big, uh, just massive canister of things. The trash can, the crashers, the spring, the scaffolds, and then the chain drop. The chain drop, I'm, I just don't see myself using. All in all, I think this library is wonderful. If you want the detail that I've been talking about and all of the mic positions and everything like that. If you already have, for example, I had BBC Symphony Orchestra Professional before this, and even the core version has all of the same instruments as Professional. If you already have that, you don't need this library. So that's why I think for most people, this probably isn't what you wanna go for. I think a library that is really much more worth going for is low percussion. If you're considering that one, check out my review for, for that library. But this one just has less essential or even unique things about it that you can't find in other libraries. I'm glad I have it in my template as something to really extend and broaden out for my palette of percussion instruments. Full disclosure, Spitfire Audio did send me a copy of this library to review here on my channel, but I'm not getting paid. They didn't tell me to say anything specific about it. These are all of my thoughts as I really think them. There are also a couple of things that are missing in this library that I really, really would have loved to see. And that includes a sizzle symbol or a rivet symbol. It's basically, think of a regular suspended symbol, but has some holes drilled into it and has these little metal rivets on it so that when you hit the symbol, all of the 
the rivets kind of vibrate against each other and it gives you the effect of a sizzle. That would have been really great, or at least a symbol with uh, some metal beads on it. And that's another common way to have a sizzle symbol. So that's something that's missing. So again, the topic of value comes into play here. Now the advantage is you can buy each of these libraries individually and you're not stuck with all of these instruments if you go for the Abbey Road Orchestra percussion library. It's, it's split up into what is now three different sections but will likely become four. I am assuming that Abbey Road Orchestra tuned percussion is coming next and that'll complete the percussion family and then they'll move on to other instruments. So I've made this point before but I just want to reiterate it. If you were to try to record all of these things at Abbey Road Studios at this level of detail with a world-class engineer and all the time it takes to put together these samples, it would cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. You can get this portion of the library for just 450. Now, for the broader market, that is a lot of money for just these sets of instruments. Spitfire Audio's target market with this, however, is the high end of the composer community. A person who relies on these instruments to do their work, how they make their living, and who can afford to put money back into their, their craft. So don't feel pressured to get this library specifically because you think you need it because of the Abbey Road name. There are a bunch of other orchestral percussion libraries that include more instruments more broadly, but what these libraries really have the advantage of being is really, really deep dives into one specific category and doing that really, really well. Again, in high percussion, I wish there was a shekere, and in metal percussion, I wish that there was a sizzle symbol or a rivet symbol of some kind. That's the one thing that I can think of that I think is missing from this. Otherwise, I think it's a great addition to the line. I'm really excited to check out tuned percussion. I'm expecting all kinds of marimbas and the vibraphones and timpani and tubular bells and crotales, the whole gambit, but with tons and tons of beaters and mallets and sticks. And that's what I find I am missing in my own template right here. So I'm glad to have filled out my percussion folder so much like this. But if you were to go with one of these three libraries, probably low percussion, you're, you'll get more bang for your buck. Only because the instruments are more unique and they sound really, really awesome. All right, so that's it for me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll try to answer any questions you might have that I might have missed talking about in here. Until next time, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Ernesto Composer. You can visit my Patreon at patreon.com slash Ernesto Composer. You get access to templates like the one I'm using right here, right now. Score study versions of my own published works. Score study Sunday hangouts every single month and more goodies. You can visit my website at ErnestoComposer.com. Thanks so very much for watching and as always, take care. Oh,